Hi, I want to introduce you to Power BI and specifically the way that you can use Power BI to ask questions about data. I, I believe that often we get fixated on the reports that we've got to produce when we do an analytics project or a BI project. But really, business users have got questions about the data that they want to get answers to, whether that's a teacher, a school principal or somebody else in the organization. What they want is answers to questions. And that's why I want to show you Power BI, because one of the features is called Power BI Q&A. It's my favorite way of being able to ask questions about data. What we're looking at here is the Power BI dashboard. So I've just opened it up in a web browser and you can see a couple of things. The main thing you can see on the screen is a dashboard, because what I've done is on this system, I've set up the key metrics that I want to look at every day. So you can see as I scroll down this, uh, a series of reports that give me numbers or charts or visualizations. Now that's great for people that are used to seeing dashboards and for whom the key way to get the information is to just look up a, up a report. But the thing that excites me about Power BI is this box here at the top. This one that says, ask a question about the data on this dashboard. Because this is the equivalent to a search engine botch, box. And what it allows me to do is ask questions about the data and Power BI goes to look for answers for me. Now the, the data that is in here is principally data from the Education Queensland open data site, plus a series of bits of data from other sources. So for example, I've got data in here for the Australian Bureau of Statistics, and it's all linked together in order that we can ask questions about the information we've got in here. Let me show you the basics of how Q&A works. We basically just type in a question and it'll try and work out the answer. So um, let me type in enrollments. What I'm asking it to do is to go and find the answer to the question. And, and all I've done is say uh, enrollments. It's shown below how it's interpreted the question. It's interpreted as show enrollments. It's gone away to see what data sets it's got to be able to answer that question. And you can see at the bottom here, it's decided that the 2013 Queensland Education Open Database is the one that is the best source of information and it's then decided how to display that information to me. So in this case uh, we can see 506,000 students. Now let's extend that a little bit further. So that's just basic enrollments. Let's ask for it by um, geographical region. Now uh, a point to make here is that what it's got is all the information on the schools and the students and where they are. Um, so it goes away to look to see how it can best answer as I start to type in D-E-T-E. -E. That's a field in the database that's called D-E-T-E -E Geographic Region. So even before I finish typing in the question, it's been able to go in, find the answer to the question, and also to decide how to display the information, which in this case, it's decided to show it to me as a bar chart. And I haven't finished typing the question, so it's filled it in anyway. If I just um, keep going. Um, I can get it to give me the whole thing and then let's maybe break it down a little bit further. Let's see that information by geographical region and school type. And again, it goes to find the information. School type is in here so you can see the different types of school and it is decided to show it to me as a bar chart. Now we can change that. Let's say, uh, let's look at it by something else. Uh, the database also contains the information on the federal electorates. So I can get the data by federal electorates or um, what else have we got in here? Local government area, LGA. So it's very easy for me to go in and start, start asking questions in plain English and have it display the data for me here. We can also change the way that it show thing, shows things. So let's, um, oh, I don't know, let's have uh, metropolitan enrollments. So as I'm typing the question, it's already starting to list. So here we're seeing a list of all the metropolitan schools. Um, so enrollments uh, by postcode maybe. That's a great diagram, but uh, let's have it as a map, as a tree map. So here we can see where the breakdown is of all of the different students. So we've got the ability to take control of the way it's showing us data. We've got the ability to ask complex questions and it will take those questions and give us a visualization. So in this case, what we're seeing is by all the postcodes, we can see how many students 
are enrolled across all of the schools. Now this traditionally would have taken quite a while because what we would do is send somebody off to go and generate a report. They'd come back with a report. It wouldn't be quite what we wanted. You might see two or three weeks elapsed while somebody's pulling the information together. Whereas I can get the information by simply asking the question. And as before, we can dig into it a bit further. Let's say, let's only see this for special schools. So now it's just giving us the data for special schools. So that's how it works. We ask a question, it interprets it, and it shows us how it's interpreted it. It goes to look for the best source of data, and then it illustrates it for us. And the postcodes, it's got all of the data on postcodes from Bing. So it can go to Bing and say, well, where is this postcode in Australia? And it will um, plot it on the map for us. OK, let's show how we compare different data together. So let's start off with uh, geographical region. And let's see average attendance. OK, so the data is published in uh, a number of different tables, but it's pulling it together all into one place for us. So now we can see across all of the schools in all the geographical regions, we can see during the attendance rate. So let's compare it to something else. So what I'm going to do is there's some um, in the open education data set, there's information about the school surveys. So let's take the answer about the proportion of parents that answer that my child's school is safe, and we can compare that against attendance information. Or they publish parental views on whether the school is a good school or not. And we can very quickly change the question if that isn't showing us what we want. So maybe instead of th seeing things by geographical region, let's just focus in on one segment of schools. So for example, let's go and look at the metropolitan schools and maybe let's see the primary schools. So very quickly, we're reinterpreting the question. It's displaying the new data for us. This is really the point of what Power BI allows you to do is we can go in and keep exploring the data to look for relationships between things and to start digging down and ask questions in a different way. This is the reason why I think this is so exciting because in the past, what you would have had to do would be to go and find your business analyst, ask for a new report, ask for it displayed in a different way. Okay, let's go back to the dashboard and let's um, ask another set of questions. Now what I'm gonna do is build, build this question up slowly, um, a word or two at a time. So first of all, let's ask it for information on primary schools. Now. You can see the speed of response. As I've finished typing the word primary, it's bringing me back a, a table of primary schools. So I want to look at primary schools, and let's look at um, average NAPLAN data. So the NAPLAN data is published for all of the schools in Queensland as part of an open education data set. So I've pulled that data into this uh, database as well so that we can compare it to other things. So we're looking at uh, average NAPLAN scores for primary schools. So we probably need to be a little bit more specific. So let's look at numeracy scores. And then we can compare that to something else. So let's say, um, let's compare it to the answer that parents give about whether the school teaches maths well or not. So now we're seeing a comparison of NAPLAN scores along the x-axis, along the y-axis, the proportion of parents that agree that their child's school teaches maths well. And let's focus it in maybe on year five because the NAPLAN data is published for that. So the end result is an example of a, a really complex query. The, the relationship between year five NAPLAN mean scores for numeracy and the parental survey data on math teaching in the school. So it's very easy for us to then start to look for outliers and trends, opportunities for improvement. But it's a great example of the, the Q&A function, the ability to just keep diving deeper into a question and seeking relationships. So we could change that. Let's get rid of year five and maybe ask for the information about secondary schools. Um, and year nine. Okay, so here we go. Now we're seeing the relationship for the secondary schools and we can dig into any of these data points. So if I hover over one of these data points, you can then see the data um, for that particular school. So it allows us to just keep digging in and looking for more information.
we can also bring in other data sets and there has to be a way to be able to relate one data set to another so for example in all of the education data they're all linked by the school identity but how about the Australian Bureau of Statistics data they publish a lot of really useful information at summary level by postcode so what we can do is bring that in and we can relate the postcode from the ABS data to the postcode that a school is in so as an example what we can do is Let's ask it by geographical region to give us the average proportion of adults that are graduates. So again, even before I finished typing the question, it's interpreted the question, found the answer to the data, and decided how to display it. So what you can see here is by Queensland education regions, we can see the proportion of adults in a suburb that are graduates in the metropolitan region, 33%. Southeast, 19%, etc. Now, we've got that information, but we can start to link it together with other data. Um, so they also publish things like certificate levels, so we can see the proportion of adults that have certificates. We can now start to link that together to education. So let's do that. Um, let's go for metropolitan. Um, and let's list this by federal electorate. So what we're now doing is summarizing at federal electorate level within the metropolitan district. And what I want to do is get average attendance rate, for example, against um, the average graduate. This is a pretty complex question that we've asked it to answer for us. So what we're seeing is the attendance rate along the x-axis compared to the proportion of adults in the suburb uh, where each of the schools are based that are graduates and then mapped at federal electorate level. So we can do that against all kinds of different data. So let's change, let's ask for average graduate versus uh, average NAPLAN. Now this isn't necessarily telling us the meaning of the data. You can see below the way that it's interpreted the question. And you can see the response to the data. So basically what it appears to show is that the more graduates living in the suburb, the higher the average NAPLAN score. Um, so let's dig that a bit further because that's all schools. So let's say just for primary schools and maybe for the domain of spelling and in year five. So we're getting really specific with our question. And it's able to give us a great interpretation of the data. Uh, now that's showing a bit of a trend towards the top right. The more graduates, the higher the NAPLAN scores are in spelling in year five. Um, we could change that, let's say, map that against certificate data that comes from the ABS. So this is the proportion of adults whose highest level of education is CERT. Now I, I'm gonna stop here because um, the point isn't to go in and, and dig through the education data. What I really wanted to show was the way that we can put a tool into the hands of users that allows them to ask questions the way they would normally ask a question. Um, the, the question line here is about understanding your data and your language about the data. You don't need to understand complex uh, business intelligence skills. It's about knowing the right questions to ask in order to be able to interpret data. And this is a tool that uh, I believe the skills you need to use this are, are probably equivalent to mid-class Excel skills. Um, the business users, the people that are gonna go and ask the question, they just need to understand the questions they want to be able to ask to set the data set up in the first place. It's kind of mid-level Excel skills in order to be able to create the data set, relate it together so that users can then go in and ask the question. And of course, it's very easy to set up then the opening point which is a dashboard that they might look at on an app or on a website first thing in the morning um, with perhaps live data within this in order to be able to see what is going on. So that's Power BI and my favorite feature of it, which is Power BI Q&A.